Hey guys, I'm back again. Um, <clears throat> this time with a this is more of a first impressions video than a review or anything else. But this is my latest purchase. What we've got here is an Inakin iTaste MVP version 2.0, and sitting on top here we've got an EH Pro K Fun Light Plus clone. Um, and you can tell obviously if you're any familiar with this, this is not the stock drip tip. This is a uh, cheap Halo one that I got that I found actually fits better than the original, so I just stuck it on there and it's a bit more comfortable for me. So vaping on that. Um, in here I've got some cinnamon appleberry from uh, Wyoming Vapor Company. Awesome flavor. One second. Uh, <coughs> as you can see, I'm taking shorter pulls because I've been vaping on six milligram nicotine for close to three weeks now, and I forgot about this bottle, and I was like, oh, sweet, I'll use up the rest of it. I forgot that it was like 12 milligram, I think, 12 or 18, I threw away the bottle, but so it was a bit of a surprise when I took that first hit, so it was, I'm getting used to it again. Um, and then along with this, I picked up a really ch cheapy little, uh, I think it's called an HBC uh, tank, it's just your standard bottom coil uh, bottom coil tank holds about, I think, close to well, about the same, so it's probably around four milliliters, four and a half. Um, does the job. The I noticed one thing on this. This is a super tight draw. Um, and it does not have adjustable airflow, so this is more for mouth to lung. Even though, even then, it's still a stiff draw. On this uh, K-Fun clone, though, it's a very loose, airy draw. I can show you here. I'll do a lung inhale. Yeah, like I said, <clears throat> stronger than I'm used to. That's why I'm coughing. Um, but this is a very loose draw. This does have adjustable airflow. I'll show you how that works here on the bottom. Um, this is actually really nice. I'm going to go into a little bit of detail of this thing. Uh, you can see here, sorry, I have the worst camera in the world. That top screw right there, that's your airflow control. Twist to the right to make it t uh, tighter. Uh, left to make it looser. This is your fill, fill valve. <clears throat> Basically just a standard little uh, Phillips head screwdriver screw, uh, you unscrew that, fill it from the bottom, and one trick I've learned with this, uh, first of all, I'm going to give a quick impression of this k clone tank. Um, <clears throat> when I first got it, I was so excited, I just f filled it straight up, you know, didn't do anything to it, uh, well, it didn't come with a pre-built coil, it came with like some, I think like a couple inches of 28 gauge canthal and some silica wig, I went, I just threw away the silica wig, I don't like silica, I got some organic cotton that I've been using, like that a lot, it gives me a lot better flavor. Um, and even I feel it lasts a little bit longer, honestly. I mean, I'll replace a coil or replace a certain or a coil a wick every you know two weeks, and it's barely burned. It's awesome. I love cotton. Um, but what I learned right off the bat was you can't just you know build a coil, throw a wick in there, and vape it. You've actually got to uh, let this sit for a little bit in like some soapy water because it came with some machining oil on the inside. Because as you can see, this is all stainless steel machine. Um, and I learned that that was giving me a god awful burnt metallic taste and also part of that was I had the coil sitting way too close to the air hole um, so it just wasn't that good and I posted on uh, the Juice Junkies uh, group on Facebook which by the way fantastic group um, you know there's I can't remember how many members they have but there's a ton of people in there and you know you ask any question they'll have an answer for you really really quick awesome people they've all been vaping for a long 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 time most of them so they should have answers to your questions anyway <clears throat> so they told me what was wrong I fixed it you know coil sits a little bit higher now, got the cotton worked out right where it's just enough, not too little, not too much um, vaping on it, and it is awesome. I've been loving this thing. Mm. As you can see, it does whistle a bit, but actually, I don't mind that at all. Um, I imagine if I tightened up that draw, that uh, that uh, air hole a little bit, it wouldn't whistle as much, but I'm happy where it is right now. I can still get good mouth lung, lung hits, and then straight lung inhales <clears throat> with no problems. It's a nice happy medium. Um, yeah, there's a quick review on that. So overall, this tank is awesome so far. Uh, it's an RTA, obviously, so you can rebuild the coil. There's not a whole lot of space down there, so you're not going to be doing quad or dual coil builds uh, unless you've got a really tiny coil and you squish two of them together. I saw Rip Trippers do a video on that. Uh, it was either Rip Trippers or someone else. Yeah, it's a two parallel micro coil build. Um, I'm actually wanting to try that because it would be really cool to see how that would vape. Um, yeah, overall this thing so far has been performing great. I have the stainless steel section here. It comes with, I won't pull it out because it would be a hassle, but it comes with either, <clears throat> you can kind of see these lines on here. Oops, wrong side. You can kind of see those lines right there where that middle section is. You can either um, take this out and there's a small 
plastic one that fits in here. It gives you just a little idea of how much juice you have. Or you have one that replaces these two bottom sections entirely. So you have a nice big clear uh, tank so you can see exactly how much you've got. Um, which I think is awesome. You know, if you're if you're vaping something that's a little less acidic, I put this stainless steel section on because I had a lemonade flavor in there and I didn't want to crack the tank. Um, <clears throat> and I had an idea of how much was in there, so it was easy to fill. Um, yeah, so far enjoying it a lot. And then onto the main thing, obviously, this eye taste. I'm just blown away with this. I love it. It's simple. It's it's got enough options to where I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not like struggling to figure out what's going on with it. I'm not. Forgetting, oh, which wattage do I have in order to up my voltage or blah, 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 blah. It just works. I set it on one setting that I like. It works, and I keep it there. Um, what's nice about this, I'll show you quick. And once again, I'm going to realize that my, yeah, I hate that. Um, <clears throat> um, my camera reverses everything. Right now, this is a uh, 2.5 ohm coil. Or no, is it 2.5 or 2.3? Yeah, 2.5 ohm coil, and the reason that that is is before I knew what I was doing, I ordered a 100 feet of 32 gauge Canthal. Um, so that's why I do have a higher ohms on here, but I haven't found any super big difference. I did actually, I just placed an order for some 28 gauge. So I'm gonna be building with that from, from now on in the future. Uh, just because I like it, it performs a little better in my opinion, but the 32 gauge works just fine, no problems, a little bit higher ohms, not a big deal. Um, excuse me. Uh, let's see, other than that features, you hold this top button, and you're in, you hold it for a second, and you're able to adjust the wattage. I find I keep it on wattage most of the time. I don't mess with the variable voltage too much, but you hold that on that bottom button and you get your volts. And God, I'm sorry that my camera reverses stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to change that. And then you tap this top button again and you get your wattage settings, which I like wattage more. And then it also gives you a stupid, I hate this, but it has a uh, puff counter. And right now it's saying I puffed 400, or I hit that fire button 496 times. And another feature on this is, I'll try to show you this. You can see it's going green at the bottom. When your battery is getting lower, um, it'll glow yellow. And then when it's almost dead, it goes red. So you can tell what you know what your battery level's at, which is nice, because then I'll know, okay, I need to plug it in now and charge. Also, this is a pass-through, um, so you can vape while it's charging. And it's nice about this, I have to go into this detail, try to keep this quick. You see this charger? Yeah, it looks weird, doesn't it? There's a reason for that. <clears throat> Let's say you have a phone that's almost dead, or even a tablet or something like that. I don't have a tablet because I'm a cheap college student. But, see in this bottom here? There's a little switch, and it says output. If you flick that on, after you've plugged in the uh, USB side of this, try to do this, plug that in, turn your output on, and you'll be able to charge cell phones, iPods. Uh, you, you might be able to get a little bit of battery on a laptop. It'll probably drain it pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> but that is a cool cool feature that I really like. Uh, so it's nice. It's a huge battery. It's a 2600 mAh battery in here. So this is this will last me between two and three days, depending on how much I'm vaping it. Um, only complaint I have about this, and this is a complaint I've noticed a lot of people, is the placement of this button is just not ergonomic. I found, I ended up pulling, I'll try to show you. I pull it like this and I use the side of my thumb to hit that fire button. Mm. Um, I mean, it works, don't get me wrong. It's not like it's uncomfortable or weird at all, but <clears throat> if uh, I taste or Anakin is listening, I don't think they would. Let's be honest. I, Anakin's not watching this video. But if they were, I would put that fire button either on this side or one of these sides, or possibly even Grim Green talked about this on that top, or on the top right there. There we go. So you hold it like that, hit the fire button, boom, vape, you're good. Uh, but it's not a huge detail. I found a way around it. Works just fine. Mm, that's a good flavor. Uh, let's see what else can I talk about. Um, yeah, not a whole, whole lot I can't think of. Um, you know, your standard LCD display screen, or OLED or something like that. I can't remember what it's called. This is nice because you know even if it's really bright out, it's not like a typical LED screen where I wouldn't be able to read what's on there. Shows up nice and clear. Uh, <clears throat> haven't had any issues with you know uh, having any battery issues. Fires just fine as long as I've got my coil build right, which I'm getting better at. Um, and also it comes with. I'll show you here. This is a neat little feature. So let's say you've got something like a Kanger T3. This is a T3S. 
But let's say you got something like this. You notice, oh no, it doesn't fit. Oh no, you're panicking. Don't. See that? That beauty ring, or, or adapter, whatever you want to call it, comes off. And then, it has ego threading. Woo! In fact, is this even full? It doesn't sound good. Yeah, juice them out. The uh, only thing I've noticed with this is the airflow on this is terrible when you have it on here. I don't know why, but it is just god awful. It's the tightest air draw I've ever had in a, on this thing. So that I don't I don't use those at all <clears throat> on this device. But you have your standard five ten threads in the middle, and then you have your exterior ego, ego threads. But obviously, device the tanks that I'm using right now are all five ten threaded. So I throw that. Uh, UD ring or adapter on there. Only thing I've noticed with this uh, Kanger knockoff is that, I don't want really to call it a knockoff because it's pretty damn awesome, but this Kanger clone <clears throat> is that if you have this uh, airflow screw on the bottom here dropped to where it's a really loose draw, let's say you're going for long hits, um, it will not let you screw this on all the way. It kind of gets in the way of the threading. Uh, so that's something to consider. So you'd actually have, to, if you wanted a really, really loose air draw to where that screw was below the threshold of this bottom, uh, you know, the base. You have to take this off and look kind of funky, but I found a happy medium to where I get a nice light draw, and at the same time it fits flush on there. Um, yeah, so that's just, like I said, this is first impressions. My opinions on this might change in the near future. Um, who knows? But so far, I'm enjoying it a lot. God, that, I don't know what level nicotine that is, but it gets like a freight train. Um, you should have seen it when I had the 28 gauge candle on there, it hit even harder. Um, yeah, so far I'm really, really enjoying this. I'll be putting out more videos in the future. Just placed an order with the Vapor Shift again. Um, I'm trying out, I got some more of the Honey Perry because I liked it so much. And then I also got their Pear Brandy flavor, uh, which I can't wait to try. I love the combination of fruit and liquor flavors. Like, for example, I mentioned in one video the Apple Bourbon Tobacco was probably one of my favorites. Um, so I love that combination. I tried one a while back. I can't remember who it was from. I can't even remember. Yeah, I can't even remember the vendor name. My friend just had half a tank of it. He's like, here, try this. And it was a vanilla rum. And it was just blew me away. I mean, it had a 24 milligram nicotine in it, so it kicked my ass, but uh, it was still great. Um, once you got over that throat hit, feeling like you got kicked by a donkey. Um, yeah, so, so far, that's all I've got for this video. Just a quick first impressions. Uh, keep an eye out for videos in the future. I'm probably going to be doing some more stuff with this. I might, I'm going to try to do some like coil builds to show you guys what I'm doing. Problem is obviously with this camera, it'll just make it so difficult. I'm going to try to find or borrow someone's camera that would allow me to do some more up close shots just so I can give you guys an idea of what I'm doing. All I've been doing so far is micro coil builds around a 564 drill bit following Rip Trippers video. I'm still very, very new to rebuildables. Um, I actually did my very first rebuild on this Kanger T3S, um, and it actually worked out pretty well. You know, standard uh, standard coil, cotton wick, nothing special, but it worked. And I was really happy because I had destroyed the silica wick a long time ago and decided I wasn't going to bother with it again. Um, can't think of anything else. Like I said, keep an eye out for future videos. I'll be back soon, hopefully within the week or week after finals are kicking up here at school, so I'm going to try to, uh, you know, I'll try to keep things going but no guarantees so for now have a good day vape on